Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? Barbarian Hour back to back with Mac coaches. First, we had Big Joel Greenley. Now we got John Stutzman from the University at Buffalo. Is that still the branding of the uh, university, John? It's the University at Buffalo, baby. Yeah, people confuse it. The Bulls, the University of Buffalo. It's not University of Buffalo. University at Buffalo. Are you guys in Amherst, New York? Amherst, correct. So Amherst, New York, um, obviously right in the greater Buffalo area. It's kind of like uh, Pitt is not actually in Pittsburgh. It's right. in, uh, I can't even think of the name Oakland. right now. It's in Oakland, it's right? It's Oakland. Oakland Zoo. They yeah. call it the Oakland Zoo, right? Yeah. So it's, it's a similar to that, right? I mean, right. you have a lot of schools like that. And you have a lot of pro teams that are like that, and people just don't know that. You know, no New York football teams play in New York, John. You know that, right? Uh, Buffalo Bills, baby. John, no New York City football team. You didn't say city, big dog. Okay, okay. You had to get <laughs> me with the Buffalo technicality. I, I don't like it. Hey, listen, your fans are a bunch of mouth-breathing Table jumping on drunk idiots, but I love it. The Bills Mafia. JB's Bills Mafia, I think. That's it, baby. Yeah, because his wife was a reporter for it, right? Well, she's uh, she's related to Thurman Thomas, I believe. No way. That's yes. crazy. And her brother was a uh, national qualifier for American U, right? I think he was. I don't know if he was all American or top twelve. Oh, was he? I didn't know yeah, that. I think he, was top 12. he was a tough son of a gun. And they're he, from Buffalo. Lauren, Lauren is from, from Buffalo. Iroquois. They're from Buffalo, Iroquois, New York. Okay. Yeah, Around the Iroquois like, outside of Lancaster, out in that, out that area. Okay, I got you. So that was that. Is that east of Buffalo then? It's probably 15 minutes from me. Okay. So it's not far. <laughs> that's, how I, that's how I justify it. Got it. It's not far at all. Okay. Not at all. So, so just quick introduction. John Stutzman, the head wrestling coach of the University at Buffalo. The Bulls head coach since 2013? 13. It's my ninth year. So, yeah, 13, 14. 13, 14. Was the head coach previously at uh, the Bloomsburg Huskies, Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, where I uh, got the opportunity to meet Coach Stutzman and uh, experience many a Nutsman moments. It's John Nutsman, N-U-T-Z-M-A-N, even though it is actually Stutzman because I got – and I still got that WVU post interview. I send it to you periodically like once a year, don't I? It's fun. I mean, it's all good fun, <laughs> you know. I remember it, man. Somebody got pinned. Your heavyweight got pinned, and you lost sixteen fifteen or something. Yeah, remember that? 18-17. Well, let me tell you the story. Let, let me tell you the true story what happened. Okay. So we got to give a shout out to my man Frank Hickman. Okay, remember remember Hickman. So he is was Hickman making, and is Hickman in Thailand or is that his brother? They're both in Thailand. No, they're both man. killing the MMA scene. Hickman's actually been in Dagestan and Chechnya training MMA fighters. Hickman sticks out like a sore thumb in Thailand. Yeah, rat tall redheaded dude. Yep. Now nah, he's loving it, man. He's doing awesome. He he's been on all the UFC shows training guys okay okay so, 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 so what happened what happened that fateful day in uh the coliseum in morgantown well, west virginia so he was supposed to be on the trip and wrestle 41 for us and uh and i'll never forget it and uh, uh i'm gonna put his business out there a little bit he fell in love oh he fell in love and and uh, he just didn't want to make way fell in love so we're gonna get on the bus and he says is he just sold my backup i said yeah he goes use him and then get on the bus. So then his dad was driving out to WVU for the wrestling match to watch it because, you know, to, to check it out. So our coaching staff, Scott Owen, myself, we convinced his dad that, that Frank was on drugs. And he wasn't on drugs. He was just in love. That's a drug too, John. That's a drug <laughs> too, my friend. I'm no. going to tell you right now. <laughs> You can go look and watch all the people that are hooked on opiates, whatever they're hooked on. And I've seen people do way crazier things who are in love. I'm just putting it out there. And he was one of them. Yeah. You know? and, uh, and he was in the top 20 at the time. Man. He was 19 and one, you know, and uh, he just, the weight cut got him, you know, and, um, but he had an unbelievable career for us at Bloomsburg. So 
you know, fifth place in New York and uh, North Carolina State Tournament takes top 12 at the NCAA, three-time qualifier, PSAC champ, EWL champ, man. He was an awesome kid and, and uh, he, he, one of my best friends to this day. Okay. So the dual meet, who wrestled? Did he wrestle or did uh, the solo? He and the soul wrestled. The soul wrestled. Okay. And, and we got beat. And Ian lost a close match and we got beat. So that's why we lost. Well, not why we lost the duel, but, you know, that, that, that it went right for West Virginia. And we had some, you know, now you know why I said what I said. Oh, <laughs> listen to me. I, I think it will just remain the text. I don't really want to put it out. Yes, <laughs> please don't. <laughs> You're like, we're going to get new guys because these guys, they ain't getting the job done. And I was like, all right, coach. And then I remember my phone. I had like a stupid Blackberry and it was like exploding. Right. You're like, hey, man, can we talk again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was awesome. Oh, uh, you guys, guy, you know, I go red line, yeah. and I come back, you know. You, you, you red line a lot. You, yeah. you got, you red line particularly, like, I watch you red line and I'm like, this guy's head might explode off of his shoulders. <laughs> I just love what I do. It's fun, you know, and uh, I'm, we're invested, you know, we're invested in our guys and, excuse me, we're excited for, you know, we're, we, we want the guys to win and they want to win. So it, it's a good fight. You know, you guys had a ton of success at Bloomsburg, right? And yeah. you come to Buffalo in 2013. You're at Buffalo. And what was the year? Was it Lantry in the round of 12? Yeah, yeah. Lost in overtime. Oh, my God. And no, it, and then to get it put into overtime was a last second score of something. Yeah, wasn't it? yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we, uh, we were wrestling the, um, we, yeah, we had to take that ride. It was we the Lehigh four. guy. Yeah, yeah. It was Parker, Scotty Parker. Oh, my God. And then he got us, he got us in overtime, but he snake pitted you, dude. He snake yeah. farmed you. Yeah, but I will tell you this, Landry's one of the most hard nosed guys I've ever been around in my life. One of the toughest dudes ever. And also, you no, know, he's doing well. So, you know, I, I look at some of the stuff that, you know, you were able to do at Bloomsburg and, uh, you know, recently in the last, I want to say it was two years. You, uh, one of your, your athletes, Mike Decina was involved in an accident, right? Yeah. Uh, these guys are your athletes, you know, for four or five years, right, John? Or, or, or if it's now six years. Right. Do you ever stop communicating with a lot of these guys? And, and you know, a hard-nosed guy like a Mike Decino. You know, and, and that was a particularly, obviously, tragic story. He had an unborn child as well. Right. What is that like for you as a coach to, to you know, that's a part of your family, right? Do yeah. you continue to communicate with all these athletes? And you I try, you know, I mean, as I get older, you know, my kids are growing, my kids are growing. So, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to lose touch with some guys and, and, and sometimes you, it, it happens and, and I don't, I don't like it. You know, I, 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 I try to have relationships with everybody, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult though with, with my growing family, of course, you know, I'm traveling with my, my daughter plays volleyball. My other daughter is a gymnast. My son just got into football, baseball and wrestles now. So, you know, you got all those things, but, you know, Mike Decino was a tragedy. I was talking to him probably two weeks before that, you know, and, and, and I got to call those guys at Bloomsburg and when Mike was in the hospital, I'll just, uh, when, when, when Mike was in the hospital, that's my man Shoot called me. Um, Jeez, oh, Pete. When, never when, stops. It never, never stops. Never stops. And, well, when Mike Decino was in the hospital and, and it, it, it was, it was a, uh, it was a scary moment, right? I mean, he, he was, unfortunately, his accident was tragic, but the guys I saw there was, you know, Nick Wilcox, uh, you know, Josh Feltry, his wife, his new, now wife, uh, Rich Perry, you know, Sean Albert, um, you know, uh, Nate Graham. I mean, these guys had, I mean, those guys were a tight family. And I saw those guys there, and, and when I was leaving, I just told those guys, I said, when, when we leave today's hospital, you can never not hang out again. You better, we need to get together once a year for the next 50 years or whatever it is, right? Because that group was, that group was special. And, uh, and, um, and they did, you know, they, this last couple of weeks ago, they all got together, you know, so that was special to me. You know, I still got a good uh, connection with those guys. And, um, you know, so, you know, it's tragic, but something's good's going to come out of it. And I guess if we're talking silver lining with a horrible tragedy like that, were they able to harvest all of Mike's organs and donate them? I think they were. I yeah. think, you know, I, I, I just talked to Mike's dad probably two weeks ago, to be honest with you. 
you know. Um, so I still keep in really uh, keeping in close contact with his family. You know, I'll just shoot them texts here and there, or they'll call me, and and uh, they were just special people. I mean, they were all into the nutsman, you know, philosophy. Man, they were great. They were one of the hardest, toughest people I've ever been around. They're just great people. Um, and Mike Decino was special. And and you know, his wife used to babysit our kids, my kids at wrestling matches and stuff. You know, so so there was a good there was a good contact connection there with that family. Something like that, like, you know, what you were telling those guys who showed up to the hospital, that puts life into perspective, I believe. I believe you understand so much more about life when there's a tragedy like that. And it's unfortunate it's a young guy like that who's got an unborn child. But life, it's precious, man, and it's not that long. We're we're not here for that long of a time, and I don't think people really, really get that, John. Young people obviously really don't get it. Right. But now getting around, you know, I'm 42 years old. What are you, 48, 47? 40, I'll be 47 in a week. 47, you're 47, and you're seeing it. You're seeing how fast it goes. I remember your wife. I remember being at your house, and I, I want to say your wife was pregnant with your son. Yes. It's yes. crazy. What a how old is Paxson now? He's, he'll be eight in November. Yeah, I was there because it was right when you guys moved there, wasn't it? Yeah, it was right away. So crazy. You know. It just goes so fast. You know, I got a three- and a five-year-old, so. I know, man. Life is precious, man. It's so precious. And rela- And this is, you know, you're in a relationship business. Coaching is a relationship business. Don't, yes, it don't get it twisted. Because I think a lot of people get it twisted that it's a winning business. Yeah. It's a relationship business. And I talked to Joel. Yeah. You know, I, I like you guys. You and Joel are real different. You're very different. You know, you're real intense. Right. I think your head's going to explode sometimes. And then you got the gentle, you know, the biggest teddy bear that everybody loves. And he's you know, he's beloved by his guys. You rule with a little bit of fear and a nutsman. You know, his is like, hey, Joel's a jolly guy, right? Let's right. go get Joel a hug, right? I'm sure That's why I get under my skin, probably. <laughs> that big guy. <laughs> Listen, he gets under I, – I think he does it to Andersy too, man. He yeah. does it to Andersy too. But it's like some people just got this thing with Greenlee because he's just over there. He's this big, massive right. dude. He's just – he's a massive human. Just a big dude, but like – talking about that with him to you you know i don't think it's fair how we the media how some parents other coaches even wrestlers to a degree we really rate you guys on all american finishes right apr is what you should be rated on but that's that's just not the reality john it it should be guys getting degrees yeah no we don't have a pro league we don't have a pro league we just don't we don't now we got guys our top level guys are making some some good bread right but it's hard to build that, right? But I think people are mid major is real hard. Yeah, yeah. I think people are losing perspective though. Would you would you think that are we really fair with uh what was your last all American thing? And is right. that a bad way to judge people, do you think? Yeah, I mean I mean ultimately like our sport, I think, um, to be quite honest with you, I think that's why our sport is um I mean it's starting to grow again, right? But we so we, we focus on one tournament every year. But that's not fair, right? Why aren't you focusing on the dual meet? Focusing on the dual meet, you're going to put fan butts in the seat. Why is lacrosse growing? Because it's a team sport, right? And what? So what? You can be 0 and 15, and you can you can have an All American, and now you're, you're you're doing well. It doesn't work that way. We we have our sports backwards, right? And so I I think dual meets are important. I love dual meets. You know that. I, I think it, it builds a great fan base. I think um, hey, I think All Americans are awesome. Don't get me wrong. You know, I've had a couple at Bloomsburg and we're trying to get our first one here, our second one here, my first one here, our second total, our second program history here. But at the end of the day, um, being all American, is probably one of the hardest things to do right now. Think about it. It's the top 80 in the country, especially this year with six year guys coming, qualifying for the national tournament this year and places are going to be harder than it ever has been. And, and I don't know if people realize that, you know, and oh, we didn't have an all American. Well, guess what? Though? We put two, three guys to the national tournament winning record. We have 3.2 GPA. We do hundred hours community service. I mean, it, it, it's bigger than, and, and it took me some time to get this perspective, but it's bigger than, it's bigger than having all American. That doesn't mean it still doesn't eat at you. Cause I know it eats at you and you want it. You want it every night and every day when you wake up, I know you want it. I know that it's something that still drives John Stutzman. There's no question, but whether it's fair or not. Right. It drives me. You know, I'm I know it drives you. I know it I'm drives gonna, you nuts. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, we've done everything here except for put us put this program in the top 20 and get an All-American. 
we've done everything here. We put we put four or five guys on the world team. You know, we 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 put guys in the quarterfinals of the national tournament. We have MAC champions. We have all we have MAC place winners. We've done everything we possibly can do except for put a guy on the podium, and we're really close to doing that. And uh, and 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 I'm really really excited about what we got going. I got. I mean, I just hired Kyle Shoup and. And, and he's been here for three weeks, and him and Ramos complement each other so well. They're, they're just workhorses. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a really good situation right now we got going, so we're excited. So you had Muhammad left, right? McBride yes. went to WVU. Well, first he went to Olympic Training Center for, okay. with, with Jaden for a year and a half, two years, I think, or a year, about a year and a half. That's, the, his story is an amazing story, John. Yep. He, unbelievable kid man man i just talked to his dad yesterday it was funny wildest thing about him is he got the nca exemption for the facial hair he's the yeah, one that he, like now that now i think he was the pioneer of that because he's a muslim right and um it's his religious faith that he you know he right. grows a beard and it was awesome that he got that exemption and that that pioneered it for everybody else but what a hard-nosed dude well, I will tell you what a funny story about that. You know, there was a coach out there um, who turned who turned us in because he had facial hair or he had a, a covering over his facial hair, and somebody turned our turned us in and and then what let him wrestle a little bit. True story. So yeah, but he won the like the change. Yeah, we, we had to fight really hard. Our compliance director did a really good job of fighting for us and, and just building that case to, to, to get that overturned. John, he's been through a lot. Muhammad's been through a lot. That's, what, that's, that's my point to it. Yes, but John, people don't have to get – so, like, what's the big hot thing that people are talking about now, whether you have to get vaccinated or not? Right. People get a religious exemption for vaccinations. Yes. You understand Correct. that, right? Correct. I don't think people really understand how they, we don't really get how the, the freedom really works in this country. Right, correct. It's pretty absolute actually, <laughs> but there are people who, you know, will push it and they'll oppress people and then they lose in court and they right. kind of let people live the way they want to live. Right. Yes. Kind of like almost like it's like the first amendment is the bedrock freedom that we have. Religious freedom is a big part of it. I'm obviously a, a big believer in the First Amendment and freedom of speech, religion, press, assembly, right, right to petition the government for address yeah, grievances. Yeah. All those things are really important. I know they're important to you. And when you got a guy who's loyal to you like that, you know, that's a trailblazing thing you guys did. So you, yeah, it has he, to be commended. Awesome. Yeah, no, he, he, like I said, he's one of my favorite guys of all time. I talked to his dad weekly. You know, his dad runs workouts and is always trying to get me to bring some – he runs crazy workouts. Like, Didn't he come to you – didn't didn't Muhammad – graduate from high school at like 16 or something crazy 16, like that 16 and he graduated yeah. from the university of buffalo at 19 unreal the guy made a world team man yeah and he never wrestled in high school that's unreal so you develop that guy that's john that's commendable so here's a question for you how are you going to make that guy be a, a all-american in four years who's never wrestled in high school that's, that's an what answer. you're talking about Right, correct. That's what you're. It's hard to do, right? And yeah. and 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 he was 30 seconds away from going to national term. He lost to Brutke, top three at the MAC his senior year. So he did an awesome job, man. We're excited for him. Yeah, that's We're awesome. Really uh, and Oliver went to MSU. Yes. Wow. So your guys are going. Whenever coaches leave, man, they're always. I like to think that they're 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 definitely elevating their position. Do you well, feel like here's the deal, man. Right? You're gonna learn. Like, you know, and, and and we're not fully funded program, right? So let's just put that out there to the people we're not fully funded, right? And and um so my my second assistant, you know, and you get it's I think it's a great salary, but you know, in today's day and age, RTC athletes make 40, 50, 60 grand, you know, and and volunteers make 40, 50, 60 grand, right? And well that position doesn't quite pay that yet, right? So so we get we're getting guys in and we're training them up, you know, and and and, and they work hard, man. You know, we're gonna work hard, right? And and uh, you're gonna recruit hard, you're gonna work hard, and you're gonna, you know, and he like I said, not I'm not for everybody, you know, I'm not for everybody. I'm not gonna say I am, but 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 most of my coaches who left, they either become a lot of them became head coaches, you know, Brian Tucker, Danny Song, Carl Fraunhofer when he was at Columbia worked for me a little bit, right, and. I mean, these guys went on to be head coaches, you know, so, 
and they're do, and they did well as a head coach. So, you know, I, I like to think they're learning where we were working well together and learning something, you know, valuable. What do you think the biggest thing, the, the obstacle that you guys have at Buffalo is, you know, I talked to Joel, Joel actually said it to me. He's like, well, you know, people get the the concept that we're a party school and all everybody comes to do here is drink and party. Right. Joel said that and, you know, he did a really good job of explaining why if you want to come to Athens and win, you can come to Athens and win. And they have the track record to prove it with right. national finalists, multiple yes. All-Americans, and national champs. They've got that, right? right? What's your biggest obstacle at the University of Buffalo for wrestling? Uh, I think it's it's just our mission standards are really high. You know, it, it, we're, we're, you know, Coach Ramos has done an unbelievable job of getting the right kid in. You know, right now, the average SAT score to get in is 1,200. You can get you can get in some Ivy League schools to less than 1,200. You can get in some academies less than 1,200. You can get into some Patriot League schools less than 1,200. You know, and for us, it's hard to do. You know, I get a couple special admits, but our our biggest thing is is we gotta we gotta target the right kid right now because academically, UB is a is one of the top 40. I believe it came out the other day. State schools in the country, top to say top 50 state school in the country. You know, so that, that's our challenge, and I like it because now we're, we're, we're getting some really good kids academically, and, and it makes my job easier. I talked to uh, Joel about Joe Burrow and the Joe Burrow paradox or the Joe Burrow effect, right? You can be great wherever you're at. Joe Burrow is right. from freaking Athens, Ohio, right. <laughs> right? Joel told me the story. He graduated with uh, Joel's son, Walker. They graduated the same graduating right. high school class from Athens, Ohio, right? You can be great wherever you're at. We could say that there's the Khalil Mack effect too, right? Correct. Right? Like you yeah. can be the best football player in the NFL and come from the University of Buffalo. Correct. Right? Joe Burrow came from Athens High School. They lost a crazy state final game. I want to say Joe, Joel said it was against Toledo Central Catholic. But Joe Burrow was the greatest college football player of all time, statistically speaking. Right. The great, on the greatest football team that crushed everybody, mercy ruled everybody, right? Murdered Alabama yeah. multiple times. Um, they won every major award. He won the Heisman. He was the number one draft pick. But he did that from Athens, Ohio. And, he, you know, he talked about Athens, Ohio. I think Joel said in the speech, he mentioned a food bank. The food bank raised over a half a million dollars in a week. Oh, wow. So, so. Wow. But you guys got a little bit of that at Buffalo. You got right. Khalil Mack. You have one of the, well, you know, one year it was it was hands down the best NFL 14, football player. Period. 14, pound 15, pound. Right? 14, 15, maybe. Right. Yeah. But you can come from Buffalo and be great. There's just no question about it, right? Correct. Correct. You could be, you know, and and I we got all the resources. You know, we got we got great strength and conditioning staff. We got nutritionists. We got mental health. We got academic services. We got great coaching. You know, we got uh, athletic training staff. I mean, we got all the bells and whistles. You know, you, you just got to want to put the time in. You know, and, and I heard Lou Brazelli tell me this a long time ago when I was coming up through. He said, you should be working out 12 to 14 times a week. Well, that's, that's easy. That's twice a day. <laughs> you know, there's no secret, right? That's, that's, how, that's how they were doing in Edinburgh. That's why Edinburgh, when, you know, when Flynn was, had those, those guys rocking and rolling, and I think they're going in a great direction with Matt Hill. That's what they were doing, 12 to 14 workouts a week. That's it. There's no secret. Yeah, this is not – you know, Gable winning nine in a row. Dan Gable and those Hawkeyes, they won nine in a row. You know, John, they, they, he, they worked fanatically, and he, and he recruited the best guys, and he was right. double and triple stacked at every weight. Right. The guy who could step in – Oh, now the second rank guy goes down. Now nah, we got to put the guy who's probably the seventh best guy in the right. country in, right? And they Absolutely. built that, and they did that through that that incredible work ethic. Well, then the country started to copy them. Correct. They figured out these guys were doing 12 and 14 workouts a week, and they were living it, and they were fanatical right. about it. And then that's when a lot of the other programs, Bobby Douglas obviously figured yeah. something out in Arizona, right, at Arizona State. And then obviously, right, you know, down the road, up the road in Ames, they figured something out, right? I mean, <laughs> right, right. they figured this out, right? And then obviously Oklahoma State's got a tremendous tradition, always have been before Iowa put that, like, that work, that grinder mentality right. in there. Oklahoma State always had these super talented guys. But, okay, all the bells and whistles. Yep. Is your wife one of the bells and whistles that you're talking about at UB? Does she still work there? Yes. She one of the bells and whistles. She's a strength conditioning coach, right? Yeah, um, she worked with um, soccer, our women's soccer program and our softball programs. 
And then uh, she worked with women's basketball when they made the Sweet 16 and, uh, you know, their, with their, their runs. So, she, yeah, she, she's there and she does an unbelievable job with those teams. She doesn't work with our teams. She gives advice about our team, you know what I mean, to our strength coach. But uh, they, they kind of keep us separated a little bit, right? Um, you know, she wants to work with wrestling because, you know, her brother, you know, wrestled for me and coached with me and was at UNC. And so they got a wrestling family, you know, but – it's just probably best that uh, for my sanity, you know, and her sanity that we don't work together every day. <laughs> you already answered that for me. Thank you. Um, as far as your kids competing, you talked about how your kids, you got this growing family and your, your kids yeah. are involved in everything under the sun. Um, are you psycho dad who tries to critique or are you hands off dad? It's funny you ask that, right? So, I, I like to think I'm not the I'm not the crazy dad, but I caught myself being the crazy dad, right? So you know my my daughter's a really good volleyball player. She's been on varsity for seventh grade, eighth grade, and ninth grade now. That's right. They can do that in New York. A seventh grader can play on the varsity. That's right. And uh, she has a really good high school coach right now. We were at a different school for seventh and eighth grade, and then we went we transferred to a Catholic school. Um, not that I'm Catholic. But, uh, <laughs> but, but we train. <laughs> you didn't have to say that, dude. Come on. I don't mean anything bad by it. I'm just like, she went to a Catholic school. Like, we're not Catholic, you know? Okay. But, but, uh, but she had a really good coach there, and, and, and it's her club coach, right? So, so we decided that was her best, you know, for her development, that was her best bet. And she's a really good student. She gets straight A's. And we know that doesn't come from me, right? So, <laughs> So long story, you know, she, I probably, you know, I was probably upset about something and, and over the summertime and I reached out to him. I probably shouldn't have. But then I had to apologize to him and say, I'll never talk to you again. <laughs> hey, John, do, have you, do you guys get the fringe benefit at UB for uh school for free? No, none. None. I don't think, yeah, because Joel's kids got it. I know Andresi's kids get it at Kent State. And I know those kind of mid-majors do it. Right. I know Bono's I – th- I don't think Bono's daughters get it at Wisconsin. Don't it. I don't think they care. They don't, they don't do the, no. the tuition uh, waiver or whatever. But, wow, you guys – you don't get that fringe benefit, huh? We don't get it. We don't get it. I don't like that. I don't like it either. We would all go to Buffalo, baby. <laughs> I don't baby. like that at all. <laughs> right? But they got to get in on their own, own merit. Like you said, it's hard to get into yes. school. Correct. Uh, Correct. So that's – you know, that you got these super high admission standards. Um, you guys have been so close, like we talked about earlier with that round yeah. of 12 match with uh, uh, Lantry and Scotty Parker. Just a wild, I can't believe I Sitting on the edge of the mat, you know, because I get so close to the stuff right. the NCAAs. You know, you see me there. And it's just like to see some of these things unfold, it's, it's incredible, John. Like, when I saw that unfold, I was like, how did this happen? Right. I, and I, I, I walked to the, I'm like, hey, man, you're doing all the right things. Keep it up. Yeah, we, we train right. You know, we train hard. We train the right way. You know, I think, um, you know, I, 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 you got to adjust some things with time, right? Is, is, and I'm learning. I'm, I'm learning every day. I'm still adjusting some things, how I'm training guys a little bit. And, and, uh, but, but we train right, man. If you look at our summer success and freestyle success and things we have done, I mean, we're, we're training the right way, right? It's, it's now we just got to, we got to fine tune some things and tweak some things. When you look at the, the lineup this year, you know, Joel ran me down uh, up his lineup from 25 on up. Uh, how many – you guys, how many qualifiers do you guys have coming back? We got two. Two coming back. Yep. Who, were la- who were last year's qualifiers for Buffalo? Um, last year was uh, Michael Petit and Sam Skyler, but Sam transferred to Iowa State. And then uh, – but we got Derek Spam back. So, Derek, you have one returning qualifier. You had two last year, you have one returner. Yeah, correct. And Derek two years ago. Got it. So, yeah. you have two returning qualifiers – one from last year, one from two years ago. Yes, correct. Okay. So when you look at this, uh, you know, how many guys took advantage of the sixth year in your program as far as the COVID year? Uh, two. You know, we, we only had two available. Two was able to do it and two came back. You know, Johnny Osseri at 149 has been a, he's been a staple in our program. He's an unbelievable kid, a uh, young man, I should say, right? And Derek Spann, you know, those guys – Johnny lost his whole last year. He had COVID. He got COVID and, and shut him down. Wow. Yeah, I mean, so, so his last year wasn't like he, like he wanted to go out. So he's going to give his best shot this year and see where it goes. But he's a tough kid. 
you know, he, he's talented. So we're excited for him and see what Did he have COVID well. at the end, John? Hold on. Did he have COVID at the end? Is that what nope. it was? No, we, we, he got COVID, uh, and, and I probably shouldn't talk about it, right, with, with all these laws. Yeah, and that's stuff. fine. That's uh, fine, but he got but, COVID. But Long no, he got short. it at the beginning. He got, he got it at the beginning, and, and, and we shut him down. We just shut him down, and a couple of our guys got shut down because they got COVID early, and it just precautionary, and it was, pro- it was the right thing for those guys to shut him down. That's how it goes, and that was, that was the world we were living in. I think yeah. we know a lot more about it now. Yes. And I think you're going to see a different world. Well, what's wild about you saying that, that wouldn't have happened in Ames, Iowa. That wouldn't have happened in Stillwater, Oklahoma. <laughs> and you know that, right? You know, it's the state you're in is very, very has a very high, they, they take the most precautions, right? Yes, New York. Yes. Yep. New York yep. and California take the most precautions. I That's don't right. think Stanford had an indoor practice last year. Yeah, it's crazy. Now, I will tell you this. That's wild administratively they've done they did a really good job with our guys i mean brian brada and and, and, yeah. and his staff did awesome we we were practicing you know but we had to go through all the pro, we were able to get in our room and and all that good stuff you know and 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 all summer we were in our room and so we they they our university my my administration nate wills is unbelievable you know he, he's been he's my he's awesome and then, you know, working with, working with him and my, you know, the sports med staff. When you look at it, right, you know, it was such a tough year. Joel and I talked about it. You know, they had one national qualifier right. last year with Gian. And uh, he said they were in pods of six. Right. 36 guys on the team. That was six practices a day. You had to clear the room out. You had to disinfect the room. And you could only have six guys at a time. Yep. You guys were all at such a disadvantage last year. How did you get through it, man? What was the biggest thing? How, how were you able to get through that and get the kids through it? Well, you know, we had, I mean, man, it, it was tough. You know, it was tough, but we had guys who really bought into what they needed to do, right? Now, I'm not saying guys didn't hang out with their buddies and, you know, and, and try to be a college kid, you know, but – but if you wanted to wrestle, you, you're, you're going to try to figure it out at the, at the end of the day, right? And, and I think, uh, you know, we had the MAC tournament, you know, and, and, and had the NCAA tournament and w- without fans, but we got to wrestle. And, and I guess that was a silver lining and try to get to that point. So, Yeah, uh, the MAC tournament really bummed me out because I think they, like, 11th hour were like, yeah, no fans. Right. Correct. That, that bummed me out because I was trying to do that one. I wanted to go to that one. And because uh, that was at Ryder was the host, right? So it was right. in Jersey. Yes. Yeah, I, that that would have been one I would have liked to have gone to, but I get it. You know, I get it, and I understand the precautions. But I think we know a lot more about COVID nineteen and the new variants of it yeah. um, as it evolves, right? Because you know that this I think this is around, right? I think I don't yeah. think this is going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. That's my um, opinion, right? And yeah. I mean, I'm thankful we have ninety nine percent of my team vaccinated and staff, so. Nice. That's awesome, John. Yeah, that, yeah, I mean, that's a good thing for you guys and probably something that the university had to have in place in order for you guys to, to move forward in the most normal fashion, right? Yeah, yeah it was a mandate. It was a, came down from SUNY. You know, you had to be exempt if you weren't going to get it, you know, the vaccination, but, but we're all vaccinated. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy my guys are vaccinated. You know, it's something that, that they took upon themselves to, uh, because they wanted to have a normal they went to train on, in the most normal manner they could and go to classes, you know. And so they took advantage of it, and they did it on their own. So we're, you know, um, we got great kids, man. We got really good kids. I, I'm really at ease with my team right now. They work their, nut, their tails off. <laughs> are your kids, your, your three kids, your three children, are they all in-person learning? Yes. Is UB all in-person learning? It is. That's why they got 30,000 students running around campus, so it's kind of fun. Wow. That's amazing, John. But it's like, but I think uh, 98% of those are vaccinated. Yeah, that's like a wartime effort is what I would call that. That's like wartime effort. So uh, walk me up the lineup. Give me 25, who you're looking at, 25, who who, who you got there, whether it's one, two, three, five, seven guys, whatever it is. Who are you looking at at 125 to send out for the Buffalo Bulls? Man, we got, we got, you know, he's a freshman last year, so he's a freshman again, but Tristan Darty, you know, he's a past Illinois state champ. Uh, he's, um, uh, he, he's a worker, 
You know, he, he's, a, he's a little fire plug, man. We like him a lot, and uh, he's getting better and better. He's growing into the weight. He's getting big and strong. Um, we're excited about him, man. He, he, is, he, he was top eight in the MAC last year as a true freshman and, and didn't have any training in because of COVID shutdowns here like everybody else, and, and he's just really a, a fire plug, man. We're, we're, I'm excited for him. You know, he's a, a pure Illinois kid, you know, so he's a tough son of a gun, man. He, he's, a, he's a good boy. Right in and, and then we got, yeah, 133. Oh, oh wait, you got more 25s? Yeah, I got, you know, Mason Bush is going to push him. Mason Bush, four-time New York State place winner, certified at 20, 125. And then Jake Eckerley is another tough guy, you know. But the beauty of it, beauty of it is we can redshirt 22 guys on our roster if we choose to. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's how young we are. Oh, my God. Yeah, oh, we can my redshirt. God. That's you awesome. Know, so That's a great problem to have, right? Yeah, it's a problem because now I can, we can, we can take our time and we can, you know, we can get the best lineup in by the, by the time we have to. You know, uh, Derek Spann, thirty three, he's going back down. Um, it's where he belongs. You know, he, he needs to be big to win. You know, and, and he won last year, but he dealt his, his injuries, and now he'd be at thirty three, back where he belongs. And and then we'll have some good guys behind him. Tommy Maddox has done a really good job this off season. Um, Trent Fingala, Kalo Fingala, both those guys are third their worses. Okay, and uh, so we're excited about those guys. So that's those that how many guys total it between twenty five and thirty three? You're gonna laugh at me, probably uh, twelve. <laughs> Who gets to migrate up to forty one? Anyone? Yeah, well, we we're gonna. Hey, so I, I like our forty ones. You know, Trent Stringal will go up to 41, but we'll probably redshirt him, okay? But Ben Freeman, past Miss King Kid, four-time state champ, Fargo multi-time Fargo, All-American. You know, his dad was the NCAA runner-up for Nebraska back in the day. You know, transfer from Michigan. He's going back to his natural weight class of 141. Um, he is he, he's an ultra-consistent guy. He, he just works very consistently. Um, then we got Jack Marlowe that, that I'm really high on. I think he has worked – Really hard. Um, he's really good at it. Uh, just, just a good kid, and, and and trains hard. So we're we're excited about those two. And and then, like I said, you got Trent. You can redshirt there. And then um, at forty nine, you got we're, we're going to have Matt Ryan, Johnny Orseri, Ty Rains, Caleb Burgess. All of those guys are tough. You know, we'll probably redshirt Caleb Burgess. Um, Ty Rains can go to fifty seven because he's big. Um, and Johnny and Matt Ryan are pretty tough also. So we're going to have some good competition there. You know, and then uh, getting to 50, 70, you got Michael Petit, you know, uh, who's national qualifier. Um, Hunter Schott, who's a worker. He's in a red shirt. And then, uh, you know, then Ty Raines might go up and push Michael Petit, you know, at 57. That's how big he is. He's strong. He looks good. Really high on Ty. You know, he could do it. You know, and, uh, and same with Michael, right? We think Michael can be an All-American right now. It's funny. You know, we, we're not ranked in the top 25, but we beat the guy at the national tournament. They got him ranked higher than us. Makes no sense. Right, it's the Buffalo factor. We got to beat five guys. Every guy's won. That's fine. We'll do it. <laughs> Sixty-five. Uh, Noah Grover, and and then uh, he's coming his fifth year, and then um, Jay Nivison from Davidson. Jay's had an unbelievable fall. Davidson, Michigan. Yes. They, they, they know to wrestle. He he he's figuring some things out right now. And uh, his work ethic's increased. I'm really high on him. I mean, he's done an unbelievable job. Then you got Marcus Petit, Michael's brother. He's, he's going to be pretty good. You know, he's working hard. But he might go 74. And then 74, we got my man G. Hoosh going to be in the mix. Jake Lanning, Bryson Austin. You know, and then uh, those three guys will fight it out. Um, 84, Big Pete Aciardi. Now, you look at this guy. If you ever go to weigh-ins, you look at this guy, you don't think he can wrestle. Right, but this guy can wrestle. Big Pete can wrestle. You know, past New Jersey State champ. He was 1-0 last year and then and then got sidelined for COVID. And then Sam Mitchell's had an unbelievable offseason. U.S. Open, uh, sixth. University Nationals runner-up. You know, so, so at 97, he'll be ready. Man, you got some guy. You have depth. I this can't is, believe it when you say you got 10-plus guys at two weights. That's amazing, John. When I tell you that Coach Ramos – hustled his butt off for two years it's an understatement this guy is the unsung hero of our program i will tell you that nobody knows this. his daughter was in 
daughter was born. She had a heart, she had a heart defect for, he was in Philadelphia in the hospital in Delaware, AI DuPont for six months wow. with his daughter. And he just sat there and recruited and worked and came up to train with us when he could train here. And nobody knows what that guy's been through. And, uh, and he's the most, one of the most, the greatest dudes, one of the most loyal guys, just all in on Buffalo. He's bought in. You know, he's unbelievable. He's an unsung hero of our program. I can promise you that one. So, 285. Talk to me about 285. We haven't got to that yet. Yeah, my man, Toby Cahill. He was in the top 25 last year. And it was unfortunate, you know, him and Sam Schuyler had to fight it out for the, for the, for the starting spot. And if Toby was the guy, Toby would have went to the national tournament. You know, that's, he's good. Right. And then we got another guy behind him, a Pennsylvania third, Robbie Unruh, start, you can red shirt, starting to come into his own. And you know? also we got some guys, man, this is going to be the most complete team that, that I've had and here, no doubt, but the most complete team I've had as a head coach for at Bloomsburg and here. So we're, we're excited where we're at. What do you guys got to do to get over the hump, win a Mac team title? I'm not going to tell you we're going to do it, but we're going to be in the mix. You know, uh, don't, don't, don't sleep on us. We're going to wrestle really hard. We got guys that, that come into our room one day. You're going to be like, you know, Kyle Shoup, he comes in campus. He's put some guys through a workout, you know, a new coach. And he's like, holy cow, these guys work. And that's not, that's, there's no yelling, man. These guys come in and they're just doing their job, right? And, and I think this team likes each other, right? And they want to be around each other. And I think that's really important, right? There's no, no drama, you know, with anybody. And so it's been a fun time. But what do we got to do? We got to stay consistent. We got to train consistently. We got to believe. We got to really just do the small details, man. We we just got to keep, as a staff, we got to stay together. We got to work together. Um, and we just got to keep building it. And, and we're ready. We're ready. I'm telling everybody we're ready. Okay. Joel said that the MAC tournament is in Athens. And apparently, Joel gets under your skin a little yeah. bit. Yes. Uh, you guys think you can be firing on all cylinders. Now, listen, I'm just some loudmouth media guy, right? I'm, right? I'm just, I'm saying that. But it almost feels like sometimes your guys, you go so hard for so long, it's almost like sometimes your guys don't have legs going into March. Do you sometimes push a little too hard, John? Do you think you guys sometimes overtrain? No, I don't, you know, because nobody knows when we're backing off. Nobody sees when I get them off. I get these guys off two days a week. I get these guys off every Wednesday and every Sunday, right? And, and we're still in great shape, right? And, and it's peaks and valleys. You know, that we, we, we hit a dry spell in, in January. If you look at every single year, we hit a dry spell in January. And I know exactly when it happens, okay? And then we rest and we always shoot back up at the end of the year. You know, we, we've always performed, you know? I mean, we're not – we perform right where our recruiting rankings are telling us we should perform, you know, and, but we're actually, we're, we're, we're overachieving, you know, it's like, yeah, well, I mean, can we do better in March? Yeah, we should, we can, and we will, you know, but it's a belief. And then, and, and to do, there's nothing wrong with working really hard to achieve a goal. There's nothing wrong with that. And if, if, if people say I overtrain guys and that's fine, that's fine. Come in our room and find out. You know, come, you know, yeah, we work. So what? <laughs> You're supposed to. That's life. Do, do you have any doubt that you guys can't? Because uh, I'm looking at some of the schedules coming out. Have you guys right. released yours yet? Yes, we did. Toughest schedule I've ever put on paper. Hands down. And you guys just don't hide from anybody. <laughs> well, Nobody. I'll be honest with you. So when we were at Bloom, man, we, 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 we attacked everybody. You know that, right? And, and it, was, it was like, let's roll. Let's do it. Right. And, and we had that mentality, you know, and for whatever reason, I, I don't know if I lost that little bit in the last couple of years, but I said, we're going back to my old ways. We're going back to, we're opening up Wisconsin, November 1st. Week later, we got Pitt. Week later, we got Michigan. Week later, we got Binghamton. They're going to be in the top 25. Oh my God. <laughs> Week later, we got ND, uh, Edinburgh. Week later, we got NDSU. We're running, baby, you know, and, and, and we're going to run hard and we're going to try to we're going to try to win. Where do you guys, you know, when you talk about breaking down barriers, kicking doors in, getting the job done, 
Right. Who do you really look for for leadership this year? You know, you went through this lineup of all those guys. You're deep, really deep at 25, 33, 41, right? Yeah. One of your best guys is at 33. Who do you really look for to, to, to kick the door in? And who do you have high expectations for this year? Well, you know what? It's funny you ask that because we had this conversation two days ago with the team, right? We're talking about leadership, right? You know, and, and I think all 30, 34 guys on the team need to be a leader because that's how you get it done. Right. And, and there, there's a spot for everybody. If you're not the starter, then you better push your guy behind it. If, if, if you can't push your guy behind it, then we need a 4.0 or, you know, everybody has their role inside the program. That's leadership. And, and I think we got great kids. You understand that. Right. But with all that being said, Derek Spann's always been the leader of this program. Mike Petit's been a great leader. Toby's been an unbelievable leader. Right. But I think this, the Tristan Darties of the world are going to step up. The Jay Nivisons and Noah Grovers. I think we're all going to do what we're supposed to do. And I'm not going to tell you we're going to go undefeated, but we're going to compete really, really hard every single time out. Okay. I asked Joel this. I'm going to, I asked Andresi. We actually had a conversation about it yesterday. And uh, I'm going to ask you, 47, you do this at a really high level. Your intensity, you burn, you burn pretty bright. You burn hot, John. How much longer can you do this? How much longer can you be a D1 head coach? Well, Man, I, look, here's what I do know. I want to, when I leave the University of Buffalo, whenever that is, I want to make sure this program is well off for my kid to come wrestle here someday, right? And, and so, you know, if it's four years, great. If it's five years, great. If it's 10 years, great. If it's one year, great, right? I, I'm blessed. I, I've had a great career up to this point. I'm happy what I've accomplished. Um, not me, what we accomplished, whether it's at Bloomsburg and here. Um, you know, and like I said, I'm not for everybody, right? But but at the end of the day, I care about my kids. I care about, you know, I care. I care about the University of Buffalo. And uh, so how long? I don't know. I, I like to do it. I like to stick around for a little bit longer and watch my son grow and hopefully come here and, and watch my daughters, you know, Lexi go to college and Torn go to college and do their sport, right? But as, like I said, at the end of the day, I just want to make sure that that this place is better when I leave than when I got here. Right. And that's, that's my goal. What do you say to the people who you aren't for? You know, I, you know, like I said, if, if, you know, I got nothing to say, you know, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I, I respect everybody. I, you know, I respect those guys. I, I, I do. I, I just, you know, I, I'm I, Kyle shoot said it today best. He goes, man, you're, you're misunderstood sometimes. Right. Because I'm, 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 I'm always business mode. I'm always on. Right. If that makes sense, I'm always on. I will say I made mistakes in my life. We all make mistakes, you know, and, um, you know, you just got to move on, you know, but uh, but I got a great support staff and, and I got a great family and just looking to, to keep building this thing. Are you hands off wrestling dead or hands on wrestling dead? I will never coach my son. That's what I wanted. Um, Listen, that's not for you. That's for me, by the way, because I am uh, I'm in the midst of it right now. And uh, I really try and pick everybody's brain. The, the best person I talk to about this is Tommy Rollins. That guy has the most analytical approach. And, uh, but it's an organic approach at the same time. I love picking his brain, but talk to me about that, John. Why you're not going to coach your kid? Well, you know, I, man, I, I want to have a relationship with my son. Right. And, and uh, I, I just think like there's so many great people out there. You know, and, and I took him to camp this summer. We took him to Shirto's camp, his first overnight camp ever. You know, and he loved it, right? It, and they wanted me to teach some little kid sessions. I, I just can't do I won't do it. You know, and uh, I just think I need to have a relationship with my son that's not about sport. You know, and, and I'll just tell everybody this. I grew up without a dad. That's why I'm so driven. I didn't have a father growing up, you know, until my stepdad came in the picture. Right? I'm driven because of that. I want to prove people wrong, right? And and I just, I just want to have a great relationship with him. And that's kind of, that's kind of what it is. You know, you talked about that. You had this really kind of almost uh, feral child upbringing. You know, like you were raised by almost nobody. And you were getting in a ton of trouble. And the thing, man, you, you know, your fork in the road could have – John, you could be dead right now. You could be in prison right now. Your fork in the road, the, the forks that you chose, you chose the right fork, right? Because yeah. you had all the opportunities – drug addiction, you had all these things in your life that could have that could have happened to you, right? Because you had no guidance. 
Right. You know, my mom was a great lady. Your own. Yeah, my mom was a great lady, but she worked. She yeah. worked all the time, you, you know. And you didn't have any guidance. Step my stepdad saved my life. Yeah. You know, he got me into sports and and uh, and I do he adopted me, to be quite honest with you. you know? Yeah, you told me that. What was your what was your birth name? I forget. Uh Mallet. John Mallet. Yeah, you told me we, we had this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what would you say to people? Who, you know that you know there's a lot that's of why people. i misunderstood that's why i misunderstood that's yeah, why I, I that's disadvantaged why. though we have a lot of people who are economically disadvantaged right. right they're in these situations where they don't have both parents and that right. that's kind of becoming the norm and you didn't have that really because your mom was working you're adopted by your stepdad you didn't have a ton of guidance until he came in your life right correct you could have gone completely you were going the other way without a doubt you told without me that yeah without a doubt that was a knucklehead what 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 would you say to somebody who's in that position? You know, obviously you help the people you can help, right. but you can't help billions of people right, right, right. on the planet. What would you say to somebody who's in a disadvantaged position like that, who wants to have a better life, right? but the infrastructure is just not there. The support system is not there. What would you say to someone, John? Just listen, just listen to the people that's, that's, that, that's made it. Right. And I'm not, Jack Holloway, I'll never forget him. My high school wrestling coach, that guy looked at me, he said, you have one or two choices, you know, He's, he just said, you're either going to figure it out or, or you're not going to be in school. <laughs> it was ninth, when I was in ninth grade. <laughs> I was like, I better figure it out, you know, and, and you know, and, and because of that, you know, I, I, I had listened to him, you know, and, and, and so you got to listen to the people. You got to listen to your teachers, right? You got to listen to your mentors and, and not everybody's a role model, you know, but you got to listen to the right people. You know, I think, and, and I think all wrestling media out there is good, right? I think there's great people out there in all sport. Just listen to the right people. You got, uh, you know, you and your wife, you got three kids, you're, you're raising a, a growing family. How important is that? The, the two parent system. And when you're recruiting kids, you know, you don't always get that. Right. But you're right. able to work with kids. Cause you get kids like that. You get kids right. that come from a one parent or they come from, if, even if it's foster, whatever it may right. be. Right. You get kids like that because you were that kid. I like those kids. I like those kids, man. I can really connect with those guys at, at every level, every every turn on the on the road. I can I connect with those guys well, right? And 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 I I don't want to say prefer, but I really like that mentality, right? Just want to prove people wrong, and you can do it, and you know, and and but I, I you know, but but there's no. I like it both ways, but I just like those kids, man. I, I really think I can reach those kids, you know, and, and so. Okay, story time. Yeah, go. Fargo, hitchhiking. Talk about it. You actually, where did you actually hitchhike to? So when you I, hitchhiked from the East Coast? Yeah, so I was in, uh, I was in, I lived in Newcastle. Well, lived in Newcastle, Delaware. You know, which is about thirty miles south of Wilmington. And if people are down there, and then which is what forty-five minutes south of Philly, right? So I kind of grew up outside of Philly. Um, so I was. We were going to Fargo, of course, Junior Nationals. It was, uh, I was in Fargo, North Dakota for the first time ever. Before that, it was in uh, Minneapolis the year before. It was in St. Paul, right? So there was a guy at the time that was assistant coach at um, St. Cloud State named Kurt Howe. Okay, Kurt Howe was, uh, he's a Delaware guy. He was a four-time state champ, All-American out of Clemson. Uh, I think he got seventh or eighth. I think he lost to Dennis Hall. Here's some trivia for you. The 1992 Olympic trials to go to the Olympics. Right. So um, he was he was assistant coach out in St. Cloud. And my buddy at the time, Nick Del Capagni, was out in St. Cloud State. And, and, and I wanted to go wrestle in Fargo and I didn't have a way out there. Right. But so what I did was <laughs> I did was I got a ride to the Philadelphia airport. I got a, I got on a standby flight. Right. And I fly into St. Paul, Minneapolis by myself. You know, nowadays you that's unheard of, right? Mommy and daddy, because oh, you, you, you can't do it. <laughs> yeah, you can't do it. I just unaccompanied minor, but there has to be a adult who makes the purchase and then yeah, yeah, just, who, yeah. who, who sends and receives them. There has to be an adult that does that, by the way. Yeah, but the, back in that day, with paper tickets, right? I just go, there, ah, you know, whatever. So, I, so I, I get to Minneapolis, right? I got, you know, I got some money in my bag, whatever. I'm lugging my luggage across, and so I'm like, I'm in the airport, in Minneapolis. I'm like, I got to get to the bus station. Right by myself, I didn't know how to do it. You know, I mean, I knew how to do it. I'm, I'm a street kid. I was pretty smart, right? I'm like, I take a taxi cab across the town, get to the Greyhound bus station. I'm sitting there. I'm like, well, where can I? I got to get to Fargo. Well, then I just realized St. Cloud was 60 miles, whatever, from uh, Minneapolis. 
or whatever it was. Uh, so then I take Greyhound into St. Cloud. They drop me off at, at the Greyhound station. I go through the yellow page or the white page at the time. Remember, there's phone books. Remember, I used to open the and, phone book. And now, now literally everything you need is right here. You had to like, these yeah. things you're talking about, like these, your kids will not understand that. Yeah, not I'm going through the yellow pages or the white pages, right? I'm flipping, oh, how, 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 boom, I find out where he lives, right? I take a taxi to his, his apartment. I just knock on his door. He had no idea I was coming. He's like, what the hell are you doing? Uh, I stayed there for like two weeks. We uh, stayed there for two weeks. Right? <laughs> right? It gets better. Then I'm like, hey, I got to get to Fargo. He's like, well, how are you getting there? I mean, my, I'm like, you. So he drives a Fargo. Me and my buddy sat in the back of his pickup truck. No cap on it. Like from, like, you can't do that nowadays. No, it's not pickup. legal. It's not legal. But then nobody cared. Right? So so then we get to Fargo. He, you know, he coached us a little bit. He was an awesome coach, man. He was great. You know, he's one of my, he was awesome. And then uh, we had good success. He didn't place, but we, we had won a ton of matches. And then, so then when the tournament was over, I'm like, he left. I had, so I'm like, what do I do now? Well, this Jeff Schumacher was one of my, I love him, man. Jeff Schumacher, he was a coach at Bismarck State College at the time, excuse me, in North Dakota. He was running a camp. And, and these guys probably don't even re realize they did this for me. But he was running a camp. And I'm like, Jeff, I got, and I got to get to Bismarck to, to work out at this camp, right? So, and, and I may be wrong. Maybe I'm not seeing this right, right? Maybe it's just my perception. But I, I mean, I get in a car with three Iowa Hawkeye guys, right? They didn't know me, but they were going to Bismarck, right? They, they drive to Bismarck, drop me off in Bismarck. So then I'm staying there for another week. With, mind you, I probably only talked to my mom once or twice throughout this whole time. Payphone too. Payphone or calling Payphone. collect? Collect. Do, do, do. Hey, collect call from Johnny. Back home, right? You know, Johnny. You know, so everybody calls me Johnny, you know? So about little John, right? So I stay in, in Bismarck and work a wrestling camp and, and you know, do go to a wrestling camp. But now I had to get back to Delaware. I'm in Bismarck, North Dakota. Uh, thousands of miles away. It's better. So the AD at Bismarck, the Bismarck, sent, uh, Bismarck State College at the time, or, or retired AD, was Ed Kringstead. Look him up. Ed Kringstead was, a, was a, 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 one of the best coaches he was a great coach in North Dakota, well respected in Bismarck, North Dakota. Never forget it. And I, hey, Coach Crane said, "Can you take me back to Minneapolis?" That's like five hours from Bismarck. That poor guy and his wife, man, they drove me to Minneapolis. I know I'm 17, 18 years, 17 years old, man. I'm just like I'm just traveling the country, random people I don't know, you know, not thinking anything of it, you know. And then got me to Minneapolis. I flew back home, you know, and reunited with my mom. And my dad. <laughs> oh my God. But you can't do that nowadays. No. And and there's just so much bad that can happen too. You know that. Why? It's life. I know, but there's a lot of people out there that just have ill intent for folks. And I think America's man, I don't know if it's if it's as safe now as it was then. It's funny though, my wife yells at me every day because I'm like, I just tell my kid to go outside and play from dust to dawn. I'm sorry, Dawn. Yeah, whatever it is, you know. Dawn. Yeah, Dawn to dusk, yeah. That's it, baby. Don't come in. No one see you. Don't have to check in. Just do your thing. Run the neighborhood. And he runs the neighborhood like no other. But he's That's out it. there. He's with the older kids. He's having a good time. He's taking right. some knocks. It's fun. He's figuring it out. He's figuring it out. And I, I like it. it. I love it, John. Thank you for the story. I love story time with John Stutzman, a.k.a. John Nutzman. Hey, I got another one someday. I'll let, I'll let you – let it on on Frank Hickman's run at the Southern Scuffle one year. You know, when you got some time, some time, and I'll, I'll give you another good one. Do you want to save that one for next time? We'll save that one for next time. Just we're going to tease Frank Hickman. Okay. We're going to tease. It was same year, same, you know, same girlfriend. Oh, the love year, the love same year, the, the WVU, year. I'm not wrestling year. Yeah, yeah, same thing. Put my, yeah. put my back up in. Yeah, put my back up in. Not how that works, but. I I'm guess like, I guess that's how it worked that day. But uh Coach Stutzman, thank you for the time. Uh I appreciate you. You got anything else for me? No, nah, like I said, I'm just real like I'm really first of all, uh 
real quick, and, and if you could post this, this would be awesome. If you guys can pull up our um, our volleyball website. Okay, I don't know if anybody got this, but we, we had a student athlete here um, get really injured big time and she's in the hospital and she's dealing with some medical conditions and uh, they're, they're doing a GoFundMe account for her. Okay, so if you guys can look that up and it, 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 it's Monica, her name is, and she's a volleyball player and uh, she just had septic in her body and, and she's fighting. Oh, oh my goodness, her. she's fighting for her life. She's fighting for her life. And, and the, she's a UB player? Yeah, UB volleyball player. Okay. And, uh, so she's what, fighting What's her name, Monica? Monica, yeah. yeah. They're, Monica, they're the, okay. they're the GoFundMe account. If you can look at the University of Buffalo okay. volleyball website, find that, please. Um, donate Wrestling World for her. She's, uh, like I said, she, she's an awesome gal. My, my daughter loved her at camp. Um, she's fighting for her life. Okay, so, uh, she, she, so if we could help that out, that'd be great. Coach Stutzman, thank you for the time. Folks, head over to www.barbarianapparel.com. Check out what, the, uh, what Josh Stasby and – the crew have there they uh they have barbarian hour podcast uh you can get this shirt you can get the gas tank gary shirt yeah hey how do you think of that what do you think of the, the uh, name image likeness i didn't even ask joel has it affected you guys at all name image likeness for your athletes uh, to be honest with you and, and i and i had this conversation a lot with with some people how is it going to help wrestling I know it's going to help football. I know yeah. it's going to help oh, basketball. Yeah. Okay. It's going to help Gable Stevenson's, of course, right? It's yeah. going to help the Spencer Lees of the world. Yes. RBY. Right. RBY, right? How's yeah. it helping Derek Spann? How's it helping, you know, and, and, and hopefully someday it does, right? But, but right now, I understand what it's about, right? But, you know, it's, 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 I think it's a slippery slope. I really do. And, uh, and, and, and I, I think we've got to be careful before. I think we got to be very cautious before we just say go. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Coach, thank you for the time. We will uh, probably see you guys at the convocation center. I know. And uh, where else are we going to see you? Are you guys come to Kent this year? We're coming to Kent, baby. Probably see you there. So. Hey, Jim's one of my favorite guys. I love it. I, talk I to love him it. He's time. an acquired taste. He's not for everyone, much like John Stutzman. <laughs> Coach Stutzman, thank you for the time. Thanks, my man. Hello, wrestlers and coaches. I'm Teague Moore. I spent 20 years coaching at the Division I level in the NCAA, 15 of those years as a head coach. During that time, I helped a lot of wrestlers and parents navigate the recruiting process. I've now opened my own consulting business to do just that, to help you navigate the recruiting process. There's a lot of unanswered questions. How do scholarships work? What program would be right for my son? Or better yet, what coach would be right for my wrestler? I can help answer these and many other questions. Feel free to email me or call me at the information listed below, and we can set up your first consultation today. I look forward to working with you and helping you make the right choice.